Now, a large part of making it far in Skullgirls Mobile is from choosing the right fighters, making them stronger, and farming the resources to do so. This is why the first five episodes of this series focused heavily on those topics. But at the end of the day, Skullgirls Mobile is at the very core of its gameplay, a fighting game. So now that you have a basic knowledge on preparing for fights, it's now time to move on to the fights themselves. What is up guys, and this is episode 6 of my Skullgirls Mobile Newbie Guide where I discuss the basics of combat. Now just a disclaimer guys, this is not going to be a combo video, nor should it be. Even in traditional fighting games, people get so caught up with learning long, convoluted, high execution combos and completely ignoring the basics. Like what's the point of knowing all these combos if you can't even properly find openings to start them? If combos are all you know, you're still gonna get blown up by stronger teams. And if we're being honest, my combo execution's not all there. So I like to keep everything simple. Don't believe me? Look back at every single recording of me playing. All my combos start and end the same way. Tap 5 times, launch in the air, do an air combo, and upon landing, do a blockbuster or a sweep. That's like 90% of what I do in this game, and it's all I ever really needed. Look. I'm not saying combos are completely useless. What I am saying is, that's not what you should be focusing on. Another thing to note is that everything I discuss here is in the context of AI battles. A good number of the tips throughout the video might not be applicable to PvP. So here we go everyone, let's learn some combat basics. Number 1. When in doubt, block first. For those who just started the game, you have definitely gotten away with mashing. That's because in basic difficulty, the AI is at its weakest and in some points of the fight, they just stand there and ask you to beat them up for free. But I assure you, it will not be that easy at higher difficulties. I mean sure, you can get lucky and land a hit if you start off swinging. But remember guys, the AI doesn't care about whether it gets hit or not. The AI doesn't have a prize fight win streak to maintain. And the AI sure as hell doesn't give a flying fuck about whether it wins or loses a rift battle. The pressure is all on us players to play safe and stay alive. Not attacking will almost always prompt the AI to attack into your block which you can then respond to accordingly. Now as what the response should be, we'll get to that in a bit. Number 2. Identify unsafe moves and punish accordingly. This is probably the most important part of your fundamentals. So for those unfamiliar with fighting game terminology, let me explain. Now, unsafe moves have a long recovery animation where you are unable to block, which leaves you open to jabs or other relatively fast hitting moves when that move gets blocked. So here's an example in slow motion. Peacock AI from long distance likes to run up and do a sweep, which in her case comes in the form of her sliding in with a banjo. How that was actually meant to hurt anyone, I have no idea. Notice that I was able to land the jab after blocking before Peacock sweep animation has ended which I then combo into a blockbuster for the kill. This is called a punish. And all unsafe moves by definition can be punished on block. So now I'll go over the most common unsafe moves that you can punish after blocking. Or another way to look at it, moves that you should avoid spamming unless you're sure they're going to hit. First up, we have the last hit of the basic ground combo. This is why it's a bad idea to finish your strings when you see your opponent blocking the first few hits. Here's something very important to look out for. When a fighter flashes red when getting hit, that means there was no way to block it. Here it is again in super slow motion. There we go. That is a reliable indicator that a successful punish has occurred. So here's the entire sequence in full speed. Notice that I start my punish with a dash attack or a single swipe forward, then link it with the ground combo for maximum damage. The sweep or downward swipe is also unsafe on block which is why it's best used in combos rather than used out in the open. The launcher or the upward swipe is also unsafe, making it more commonly used as a combo extension. The knockback or the double swipe forward has high damage and nice combo potential but is extremely unsafe. Tag-ins are generally unsafe when blocked but take note, Different fighters have drastically different tag-in properties, so some might be harder to punish than others. Like Parasol's tag-in for example. Special moves are generally unsafe on block, but the recovery speed and range of each move varies wildly, so not all of them will be this easy to punish. Even long-range specials can be unsafe, 
as long as you have the ability to close the gap in time to punish. The same principle applies to blockbusters. Generally unsafe, but there will be special cases where you will have trouble punishing it. An example of these special cases is Squiggly's Inferno of Leviathan, which has a significant delay between the projectile being cast and its arrival to the target. So although the move is technically unsafe, it is very awkward to try and punish. This brings us back to my first point, when in doubt, block first. Number 3. Be aware of range and spacing. Let's take Parasol's Silent Scope Blockbuster as an example. It is definitely unsafe on block and can easily be punished when she does it right next to you. But from a distance, it's much harder to punish without a fast-hitting projectile. I could have maybe tried to dash forward and try something, but I am aware that Fuqua's dash isn't all that fast, so her punish range is relatively limited. So I instead played it safe and stayed blocking. I was instantly rewarded by this decision because the parasol immediately dashes forward and does an unsafe combo which leads to the easy punish. This is one of the many ways awareness of range and spacing can prevent you from making potentially bad decisions in-game. You can also apply this concept more aggressively and the most common way to do this is by capitalizing on opponent's charge attacks. Now assuming a fighter has the skill tree maxed, their charge attacks are going to be unblockable. They'll actually tell you on the screen, you know, it says unblockable, don't, don't block it. So obviously in this case, the concept of punishing it on block is no longer applicable. But what you can do is stand just outside of its range, wait for it to miss, and immediately go in for the punish on recovery. This is called a whiff punish. But there always will be special cases. For example, Parasol's charge attack will detonate her tears and deal damage as part of her character ability. And depending on the location of the tears, it might be impossible to go for a whiff punish. So only try to whiff punish her charge attacks when the field is clear of any tears. Alright, so some of you are probably thinking, well I can just interrupt the move while they're charging, right? That's true of course, and that option is always available. However, you have to remember, especially when at a distance, you're never sure when the opponent will stop charging and just unleash the move. So it's often safer to wait for the attack to whiff first. There will again be special cases, like if you're backed into a corner and have no way to avoid its range. In that case, you're forced to interrupt it somehow. Again, it all goes back to an awareness of range and spacing. Number 4. Master the Throw Break If you finish the Egret Bootcamp, then you've already finished the Throw Break tutorial. Just swipe with both fingers just as you're being thrown. So this is very important to master. After all, with a block first mentality, allowing your opponent to act first will on occasion open you to getting thrown. Mastering throw breaking will optimize your defense and make it airtight. Alright, bravo. So apparently I'm the quickest student they've ever had. Well, I bet you say that to everyone, Parasol. So some of you at this point might be thinking, my reflexes aren't all that good, so I'm probably doomed to lose to stronger teams. After all, just a single throw from a juiced up opponent often spells certain doom. Now this may sound weird, but you don't actually need fast reflexes to throw break consistently. Not in this game at least. The window to break throws is pretty generous, and there's only one command to break all types of throws. Mastering throw breaks in this game is mostly about knowing what the opponent's throw animations look like. Let's use Peacock for an example. Her throw animation involves her putting you into a sack. Now none of her other normal moves use any kind of animation that's close to that. So when you see her whip out that sack, that is 100% going to be a throw to which you can respond to accordingly. As you play more of the game, you'll realize breaking throws is more a test of memory rather than a test of reflexes. This brings me to my next point. Number 5. Be familiar with all the move animations. Now this seems like an impossible task, but it's actually way easier than it sounds. In fact, this is something that you will passively learn just by playing the game as opposed to something that you have to actively study and practice, like you know, combos. Now I need to be clear, you don't have to memorize every frame of every move of every fighter. You just have to be familiar. I already gave one example a while back about being familiar with Peacock's throw to help you react to it better. That concept applies to pretty much every other move animation in the game. Here's another example. When Double does ground combo, she transforms into Cerebella on the last hit. Small visual cues like this will help you with your response time and lead to faster punishes. 
This is a relatively simple fighting game. There are no jump attacks, crouch attacks, or high-low mix-ups. Most of the time, moves can just be sorted into stuff you can block, stuff you can't block, stuff you can punish, and stuff you can't punish. The move set of each fighter is relatively narrow, and because of the 3v3 format of most fights, you will be exposed to moves from multiple fighters quite often. The more you play the game, the more familiar you get with each move, which in turn leads to better in-fight decisions. Number 6. Find Patterns in the AI Behavior The more you play the game, the more you'll notice that the AI has certain habits that can be taken advantage of. Take for example the Taunt Punish. When an opponent suddenly backdashes for no apparent reason and has a taunt equipped, they will most likely attempt to use it. This leaves them wide open for a free hit so you can call out the taunt by dashing after them for the interrupt. Another typical AI habit is to tag out when at low health, usually below 40% or when they're inflicted with multiple debuffs. In this case, the eggplant has both low health and debuffs so the chances of her tagging out are astronomical. This makes the subsequent tag and move all too easy to telegraph and punish. There are a lot more exploitable AI patterns out there, so it pays to be attentive when fighting. Number 7. Read the fight modifications. Before a fight starts, you can tap on the skull icon on the top of your screen to view the fight modifications you have to deal with. These mods will sometimes require you to greatly alter your usual playstyle to win, so you definitely want to read them before the fight. You can also pause the game mid-fight to double-check the mods. The pause menu also shows you your opponent's signature and marquee abilities, so it's always a good idea to pause once in a while. As you go deeper into the game, some modifiers will be more game-altering than others, which brings us to the final point of this video. Number 8. Sometimes, basics are not gonna be enough. And let's be real guys, I'm sure there are at least one or two people out there who watched only the first few minutes of the video and was like, Oh, this guy's so stupid. There's so many times when it's actually bad to block. Well, sit your ass down. I'm just about to explain that part. There are going to be situations where the usual compact defensive style of play will be heavily punished. The transducer mod, for example, gives your opponent meter on blocked hits. And there's also the scratching post catalyst, which can straight up stun you for blocking. And it is what it is. Sometimes you need to be creative in your offense to be able to play around certain modifiers. However, that's a topic for another video. So that's it guys, hope you all learned something. The main takeaway here is that you don't need to be a skilled combo genius with lightning fast reflexes to win fights in Skullgirls Mobile. All you need are well-invested fighters and fundamentals. Once you have those, you can even get away with stupid shit like this. Alright, gigantic arm challenge take 5. Nothing but arms. No jabs, no throws, nothing else. Oh, okay, that missed. Whiff punish. Just gonna do something on wake up. Whiff punish, there we go. Come on, Liza. Come on, Liza. Dash. Whiff punish. And another one. Okay, so I'll cool down. I got a block. Uh, okay, can I punish that with a fist? Nope. Yeah. Ah, safe. And block punish. All right, last one, here we go. And, ah, oh, she blocked it. Okay, whip punish. Come on, one more, one more. Yes, ah, oh, she's still alive. Just the tip, baby, just the tip. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a stuff. I need stronger opponents. All right, 90K team, nothing but gigantic arms. Challenge accepted. Let's put some number ones in the back for good luck. And we're ready. Okay, let's go. I'm feeling good about this. Okay, as long as she doesn't start swinging, we're good. And oh, God. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I'm, I'm alive. I'm alive. Yeah. 